In the last two decades, geologists have discovered hundreds of subsurface volcanoes under the Arctic and the Antarctic. Just four years ago, scientists discovered 91 volcanoes below the Antarctic ice sheet. This was in addition to the 47 already known. And well, it adds insult to injury because it could very well be that these volcanoes is what's causing ice sheets to break off Antarctica and low ice numbers in the Arctic. Now, a new paper coming out is quite intriguing. A long dormant underwater volcano near Antarctica has woken up, triggering a swarm of 85,000 earthquakes. Now, this particular swarm began in August of 2020 and subsided later that year. It was the strongest earthquake activity ever recorded in the region. And the quakes were likely caused by a finger of magma poking into the crust, according to new research. And you're looking at one of the graphics from that paper. Now, there have been similar intrusions on other places in Earth, but this is the first time that, they, that scientists actually observed it occurring, according to co-author Simone Sessa, a seismologist at the GFC German Research Center for Geosciences in Potsdam. Normally, these processes occur over geologic timescales, as opposed to over the course of a human being's lifespan. Sessa said. So in a way, all of these scientists are very lucky to have witnessed this. Now, the swarm occurred around the Orca Seamount in Antarctica, a supposed inactive volcano that rises about 3,000 feet from the seafloor in the Bransfield Strait, which is a narrow passage between the South Shetland Islands and the northwesternmost tip of Antarctica. In this region, the Phoenix tectonic plate is diving beneath the Antarctic plate. And you can see the Shetland, Shetland plate is a tertiary addition there. This creates a network of fault zones stretching some portions of the crust and opening rifts in other places. And according to a 2018 study in the Journal of Polar Science, this is an area ripe for seismicity and potential volcanism. Now, scientists at the research station on King George Island, one of the South Shetland Islands. Let's move that over there. Now, here is the Orca Seamount, the seismic unrest region in King George Island, where there are some seismometers. Now, the scientists at the research station on this island which is one of the South Shetland Islands, were the first to feel the rumblings of the small quakes a few years ago. Word soon got back to Sessa and his colleagues around the world, some of whom were collaborating on separate projects with the researchers on the island. The team wanted to understand what was going on, but King George Island is extremely remote, with just two seismic stations nearby. And it costs, well, quite a bit of money to get there. So the researchers used data from the seismic stations, as well as data from two ground stations for the Global Satellite Navigation System. And they measured ground displacement. They also looked at data from more far-flung seismic stations and from satellites circling the Earth that use radar to measure shifting at the ground level. Now, the studies 
authors reported April 11th of this year in the Journal of Communications of Earth and Environment. The nearby stations are rather simple, but they're good for detecting the tiniest quakes. More distant stations, meanwhile, use more sophisticated equipment and can thus paint a more detailed picture of the larger quakes. But by piecing together these data, the team was able to create a picture of the underlying geology that triggered this massive earthquake swarm. And you're looking at that data here, and you can see 9-1-2020, a rapid increase in tremor and microseismicity. With a red zone here, it lasted a, quite a period of time and then a rapid falling off and an end of the event. So what the scientists think is that the eruption probably happened in this region. Now, the two largest earthquakes in the series were magnitude 5.9 in October of 2020 and a magnitude 6 quake in November. And those are these top quakes here. You can see one peeking out there. After the November quake, seismic activity waned, and the quake seemed to move the ground on King George Island about 4.3 inches. Only 4% of the displacement could be directly explained by these earthquakes. So the scientists suspected the movement of magma into the crust, as they should. Now, this movement of magma into the crust largely accounts for the dramatic shifting of the ground. According to the authors, and I quote, what we think is that the magnitude 6 somehow created fractures and reduced the pressure of the magma dike, Sessa said. If there was an underwater eruption at this seamount, it is likely to have happened during the time we showed you. But as of yet, there is no direct evidence for the eruption. To confirm that, the massive shield volcano blew its top. They would have to actually go there and send a mission into the strait to measure the bathymetry or seafloor depth and then compare it to historical maps. Now, the reason the evidence is sparse is because the volcano is at a deep depth. And it is only in the last 16 years that scientists have begun to understand that once you go below, let's say, three kilometers, it's impossible to produce steam. So there's no bubbling up at the surface. And in fact, this was proven back in 2007 with an international team of researchers were able to provide evidence of an explosion explosive volcano at a depth of four kilometers and this was in the arctic on the gackle ridge here now here's svalbard franz joseph land and svernyaya and here's gackle ridge in the north pole right there where santa lives and the eruption took place some portion we'll get to in greater detail in a moment. But the explosive volcanic eruptions on land are nothing unusual and pose a great threat for whole areas. But subsurface volcanoes that are real deep, not so much. And so far, researchers have assumed that explosive volcanism cannot happen in water depths exceeding three kilometers because of the high amounts of pressure. But back in 2007, some of the first pyroclastic deposits were ever found in such deep water, in fact, over four kilometers, at oppressive pressures that inhibit the formation of steam and therefore almost no evidence. So all the pumice and rocks stay down deep, including the not steam. And many people thought this was not possible. In fact, that was the current nomenclature in geology. But that all came to a crashing end in 2007. When the Swedish icebreaker Odin 
Well, they went out there. And what they found was astonishing. That a huge eruption had happened in the subsurface and no evidence up high occurred. Pyroclastic flows were there, but no evidence at the surface. Now, at a depth of four kilometers, researchers found unweathered, jagged, glassy fragments of rock spread out over an area of approximately 10 square kilometers around a series of small volcanic craters on the Gackle Ridge. These were the first pyroclastic deposits ever found at 12,000 feet with oppressive pressures that inhibit the formation of steam. And many people thought this was not possible. And yes, yes, it's possible. And the same thing may have happened at the Orca Seamount. We'll leave you links to the paper on the thermochemical anomalies in the upper mantle and the control at the Gackle Ridge because the same type of accretion is happening at great depths and coming up to the surface at both poles. Let's just take a look at the one graphic from the Orca Seamount data. And here are the fingers of that magma coming up from the crust mantle boundary. Oceanic crust tends to be 10 to 15 kilometers thick. And so somewhere here is that discontinent continuities separating the crust from the mantle. And then where is this source I coming from? The deep mantle? And so these emplacements are large and long distance and long lived and could be very dangerous, especially the Orca Seamount, which apparently has already erupted. So it's not a threat in the future, or is it? Is that just the first of a series of eruptions? And is all this Arctic activity have to do with the ongoing magnetic excursion and our drop into the next grand solar minimum? Well, leave your comments below. Be safe. We love you. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. You come here for the facts. We're not here to scare you. We're here to prepare you. And you leave with the knowledge you need to move forward. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people and be a hero. Become a Patreon and support the work we do. We love you. That's a boom. Mm.